In today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips for taking awesome portraits of musicians, so let's get right to it. What's up everybody, Pete Coco here. I am a headshot and portrait photographer with a studio in New York. And as usual, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss my latest videos. And one more thing I wanna to say today, this video is based on an Instagram poll that I put out asking people, what would you like me to talk about in my next YouTube video? And had quite a few people respond asking me about taking portraits of musicians. So thank you for those of you who answered and gave me that great tip because here we are, we're gonna do the video now. And I think it's a great topic, so let's dive right in. Capturing portraits of musicians is by far one of my favorite things to do. And the reason why is simple. I'm a musician too. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a jazz bass player. My formal education is in music and I've been playing music for my entire life. So when I have another musician in my studio, it's inspiring on so many levels. Partially because we can relate to each other very, very deeply and we understand where each other is coming from and also because many of these musician clients are my friends, my colleagues I've known and played with over the years, so it's very special to have them come into my studio and entrust me with their new photographs. Tip number one, start with headshots. Now there's a number of reasons why I do this, some practical, but mostly artistic reasons, so let me explain. The practical reason I do this is because when taking a picture of their face, I can get a feeling for the best angles to photograph them from, and I can also coach them on expression so that they understand what looks good and what doesn't look good in a photograph when talking specifically about their face. Another reason I like to start with headshots is because most musicians don't have a headshot. If you look at their portfolios, you're gonna see a ton of images of them with their instrument, whether it's a studio setting or a live setting, but you'll rarely see a great headshot of just their face. So by providing this to them, I'm already giving them something that's unique and novel, and that's probably something that they haven't had before. The other reason I do this is because when I say headshot, it's not what most people think when they think about headshots. So I'll give you a funny story about this. When I was photographing the great trumpeter and composer and singer, Tony Glousey, I had texted him and I said, I wanna start with headshots. And he kind of got back to me and was like, okay, I mean, I don't think I need that, but whatever, LOL. So we kind of laughed it off. And the reason why is because he thought coming into the shoot that he was gonna get an image like something a realtor would get, right? Something that you'd get out of a Sears portrait studio or something. So when I put him behind the lights and I just said, let's just photograph you first. And then he came out after a few shots and saw the results. He was totally blown away because he didn't expect it. So that's another reason why I like to start with headshots because if you give them an awesome headshot, an awesome image of their face, you're gonna inspire them like crazy. And you're also gonna set a great tone for the shoot. So when they look at their photo and they see their face and they say, wow, that's so cool, I look amazing, then they're already inspired to keep going and they're thinking to themselves, well, if I like this headshot this much, I'm gonna love whatever photos we get with my instrument. So that's why I always tell people, start with headshots. Tip number two, artist first, medium second. So as an artist myself, I've thought a lot about the role that the bass plays in my art or the camera plays in my art. And for many years I would tell people I'm a bass player. But as I get older and I think more about the creative process, I don't think that's right. I think that yes, I am a bass player. Yes, I am a photographer. But really these are just the chosen mediums that I use. Would I not be an artist if you took away my bass or my camera? I think I still would be an artist. So without getting too philosophical, I want you to look at the artist first and the medium second. Let me give you an example. If you had a poet come to you for branding images, you're not necessarily gonna take pictures of them surrounded by books or surrounded by quills and pens and inkwells or whatever. This might be cool, you might do that, but really that is not the artist, that is their chosen medium. So I pay a lot of attention to the artist that I'm working with 
and I focus on them first and foremost and primarily throughout the shoot. The other reason I, I like to go about it this way is because you have one unique face in your studio at that moment. And I really feel that showcasing that human, that unique one of a kind face is your ultimate job, especially as a portrait photographer. Tip number three, make sure the instrument is part of the composition and not just a prop. Once I bring the instrument into the mix, I have to remember that it's not a prop. So you can't think of the instrument as the way you would think about a couch where you place someone on it or a ladder that you have for effect. So remember, when you're photographing an artist, a bass player, a trumpet player, a guitar player, the instrument they bring with them is the most important possession that they own. So you need to incorporate it in a way that doesn't diminish it as a prop, but also doesn't make it the main focus of the entire shoot. So for instance, I'll have clients come in and they'll bring a 200 year old double bass or a brand new violin that was made just for them or a guitar that's been in their family for 50 years. And this instrument has a, a tremendous amount of value to them as an artist. So you have to be respectful of that and figure out how am I gonna incorporate this instrument into a portrait while respecting the instrument but not detracting from the artist. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at how can I incorporate the instrument into the photo in a way that's unique, in a way that's novel, but in a way that also creates a really cool portrait. So for instance, if you look at this image of bassist Martin Wind, I wanted to do something very different. So I had the idea to have him hold the bass over his shoulders. Now by doing this, it created not only a very interesting and different portrait, but it also created really good leading lines. And it also has a number of meanings you can draw from it because he's got this heavy bass on his shoulders and anyone who plays a double bass knows it's heavy, it's a lot to take around with you. And then it has a more psychological meaning because carrying the bass and the weight of the bass on your shoulders is sort of the same way that we bass players carry the weight of a whole band on our shoulders. So the picture works on a number of levels. My primary objective is to incorporate the instrument in a way that's creative, in a way that respects the instrument, in a way that still focuses on the artist, but definitely not as just a prop, something to kind of make the photo work. So don't rely on the instrument to make the photo work. Rely on your artistic skill. Tip number four, get in close. So since I'm a headshot photographer at heart, I love to take close photos of faces and I love to focus on the face, make the face the most important part of the image. So now that you're working with your client, they have their instrument with them, and you're finding unique ways to incorporate the instrument, you still wanna focus on them. They're still the paramount importance in the portrait. So in a lot of my portrait work, I'll wind up just inflecting the instrument and showing just a small part of it. For instance, this image of Rob, who's a guitar player. You can clearly tell he's leaning on a guitar, meaning he's gotta be a guitar player, but the guitar does not detract from him, from his expression, and from enjoying it as a portrait. Same thing in this portrait of Alex with his bass. So you can see he's holding a bow, you can see part of the scroll of the bass, clearly he's a musician, but it's really his expression and his face that makes the portrait work more than the instrument. You can also tell very clearly that the instrument is very important to him. You know, by the way he's holding it, by his expression, it's clear to the viewer that this is part of his art, it's something serious, and I think it really conveys that in a number of ways. So don't be afraid to get in close. Now, obviously when you're doing an entire portrait session, you wanna do a variety of crops. You wanna do close-ups, you wanna do further back, half full length portraits. You wanna give them a variety. Uh, as a practical matter, that's what you need to do, um, and that's the best way to do your job well. But don't be afraid to get close, show just a piece of the instrument while really making it all about the face. And you're gonna get some really cool and interesting results by doing this. And again, it's gonna be different than a lot of what they've gotten in the past because once again, it's gonna be paramount importance, their face 
and their expression, and the instrument is part of them. So it really shows this in a great and unique way. Tip number five, you don't need them to play the instrument. Another thing that you see that's very common when people are photographing musicians is you'll see them actually playing the instrument. Now I personally don't prefer this approach for a number of reasons. There's a practical reason why I don't like this approach and that's because we musicians are notorious for making weird faces when we play our instruments. So a lot of times, especially bass players, we contort our faces, we make weird faces, we close our eyes so you're not seeing the subject's eyes. So. On a very practical level, you're not necessarily gonna get the best expressions when you have them playing their instrument. We also tend to kind of contort our bodies when we play, so you might have a weird kind of shoulder angle or a weird shape that they're making with their body. And so those are my practical reasons. Now more importantly, as always, the artistic reasons why I don't like to photograph them while they're playing is because it's not genuine. So think of it this way. When you're playing your instrument at a gig, you have a crowd, you have energy, you've prepared for this concert. This is different than just telling someone in your studio, okay, play a few notes. They're never gonna have the same energy, they're never gonna have the same kind of artistic vibe happening as they just play a few notes for you so you can snap off some pictures. So I don't think it works as well for conveying the emotional part of the photo that you need that makes or breaks a good portrait. Now, if you were photographing them playing live at a venue, then this works great because it's context. So having a musician in your studio just playing some notes while you snap some photos, sometimes it's good, sometimes it could work, but more often than not, I find that it looks a little forced. So what I will do is I'll have them play as I'm setting up my lights, dialing it in, getting everything set to where I like it, and I'll be snapping some photos of them as I play, just for those reasons. And if we get something that we like that's cool, then we'll use it. Uh, but otherwise, I think that having them play for you is fine, but probably not gonna result in the best portrait. Um, there's always exceptions to this, like uh, this portrait of drummer Paul Seglio that I took a while back. He's playing his drum in the photo, and I think that looks really cool, but not really because he's playing, but just because of sort of the motion blur that you see in his hands. And we really did sort of pose that more than have him genuinely playing. So that's generally how I approach that. Well, that's my five tips. So as with anything else, when we're talking about art, and being creative. These are not rules, these are just suggestions. These are things that have been working well for me. So I always recommend give them a try, see if it works for you. Don't be afraid to do everything the exact opposite of what I've said in this video though, because as we know, every unique face that comes in front of your camera is a unique time to rewrite the book on everything. So it's just like taking portraits of anyone, whether or not they're a musician. You want to treat that individual as an individual and be open to getting to the creative place that works best for them and that works best for that particular shoot. But I will say that these tips are kind of my recipe, how I take my portraits, so I definitely think you should try it, see how it works for you. Let me know in the comments if you've done some musician portraits, if you think I missed anything, if you think this is a good sort of starting point, and if you photograph some musicians, let me know. I'd love to see the results. As usual, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video, hit the like button, make sure you hit that notification bell so you see my latest videos as they pop up, and have a great day with your camera, everyone. Bye for now.